permission to take them over and over with never an end. Take a step backward and take them again. Footsteps to follow, footsteps to make. New things to learn and new lessons to take. Learning from every success and mistake. Footsteps. Footsteps to follow, footsteps to make. Our three-year-old son, Malik, gets very upset and anxious when he has to go to the doctor just for a routine examination. The tongue depresses, the weighing-in process, the examination of the ears, the immunizations, they all upset him very much. Well, you know, needles upset a lot of adults when they have to get them. Malik has a problem with being out of control, that feeling of being out of control. Mm -hmm. We've noticed it here. But I've had a similar problem in the hospital, that feeling of being out of control, not really in charge of it. And I think a lot of adults have a similar feeling. And if you think about an adult feeling that way, imagine how a child feels in the hospital. That guy's trying to give me a C in his class. What for? Because he's a creep. Oh, God. What do you say? Well, I don't know. What? Huh, you scared of my cooking? Yeah, you scared of my cooking? <laughs> no, what is it, really? Your father. Oh, uh, don't worry about him. He's too busy hovering over Polly to notice you. Oh, that's right. They're operating on him tomorrow, huh? Walter, he's only going in for some tests. I swear you're as bad as my parents. You know, if they take out your intestines and pull them in a straight line, they reach from here to Indianapolis? <laughs> Who wants a bunny sandwich? That sounds good to me. Here, honey. You be careful of the milk. Here. Okay. Hey, now, what happened from the hospital? Well, um, Polly. They try to make sick little boys get bigger. Listen, you better eat your sandwich before the bunny jumps off the plate and bites your nose. Hello, everybody! Polly! Emily, Emily, would you keep it down, please? Aww. Shh, he's in there. Hi, Mr. Carroll. How's Polly? How you? <laughs> How you feel, honey? You still feel good? <laughs> Look what I got. Look in the back. Uh, listen, uh, Helen, uh, remind your daughter about la maladie del bambino in the hospital. Emery, would you come help me in the kitchen, please? Uh, Emery, uh, let's go in the kitchen and help your mother. Uh, Emery. Okay, Pop, I'll be in a sec. Mommy, what's your grandpa saying in Italian? Nothing, Paul. You don't have to worry about that, okay? Okay. <clears throat> I'll be back in a sec, okay? Ribbit. 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 <laughs> I wish you'd just stop talking like it's already been decided about the operation. Of and Marie. He ought to be prepared for the worst, don't you think? You know, he's not exactly going to a uh, surprise party. Don't worry, honey. Listen, Jimmy and Cedar are going to take off work, and Kathy's going to come home as soon as she can get a reservation. I suppose and you called Aunt Rose and the cousins, too. Well, yeah. I knew it! Ma! Emery, you know, I, I just don't understand your attitude. Look, when you have something wrong in here, you don't just sit around. Like that friend of yours, Al. You know the one that wears the bag on the outside because they didn't catch it in time? Yeah, Sal uh, Antonini. That's the one. Now, Anne Marie, honey, 
You just can't pretend anymore that something serious isn't happening. Yeah, but it's different, Ma. I mean, the doctor said he'd outgrow it. No, honey, the doctor said he might outgrow it, depending on what they find, depending on what the tests show. Oh, oh. Okay, come around this way. Uh-oh, it broke. Oh, yeah? Well, I bet a good mechanic like me can fix it. Uh, I don't think so. It's broken inside where you can't see it. Nobody's going to hurt you. First time in the hospital? Yeah, because I'm sick. Oh, I know. Dr. Nahoski told me you were going to have some tests. Do you know why? Because I have a stomach aches. That's right. Hey, little boy, I had a stomach ache, too, and they cut me open. You want to see my stitches? Polly's only here for some tests. Paul, I have a book here with some pictures of some other children who have come to the hospital. Oh, uh, nurse, um, can I see you outside for a minute, please? No one's gonna hurt you, okay? I won't let them. It's okay, honey. It's all right, Chicky. Come on, Grandma's here. You know, I really don't think that Polly needs to see pictures of sick kids, okay? So if you'll just keep that away from me. I know this can be just as upsetting for you as for Polly, but I'm sure if I explained some of the tests, you wouldn't be Look, worried. I know what goes on in this place, okay? Believe me, and I'm telling you right now, there is no way I'm letting any of you scare them, okay? <laughs> It's right here, if you want to watch, okay? Now, I want to tell you, this is going to move awful close. No, oh, it's important that you keep your hands down. Oh, honey, keep your hands down, okay? That's important. 
Don't put your hands up. Keep them by your side. Put your hands down. I think maybe we'd better come back and do this when he's settled down. I, I really... It's very important that he has this test now. No, I, I don't think you understand. I, he's getting upset. Now, I don't want him going through this when he's upset. I do understand. And you can't stop. I can't, with but him. I promised him that I would stay with him. No. No, honey. No, honey. I, I really Mr. think that Cheryl, I would You have to go. You have to go. Here, honey, take your foggy, okay? So I promised him that I would stay. not stay during the procedure. No. Well, honey, I'll it's all right. Here, Chloe, don't fine. worry. It won't, it won't be up but a couple of minutes. Remember what I told you about the tourniquet? What it does? Now, I want you to make a big Steve Austin fist, okay? That's it. Okay, you ready? Make a fist. Can you count to ten? Go ahead. I want you to hold the rules. Yeah. Don't worry about it. That's it. Before you finish, it'll be all over, all right? Make a fist. Hold still. All right. You ready? She's been gone since lunchtime. Paul is right here beside me. He really wants Anne Marie. Is Ronnie coming? Well, listen, you know what I'll do? I'll, I'll call around and see if I can find her. Uh, I'll get there as soon as I can, okay? Okay, thanks a lot, honey. Bye. Hello, Ellie. Hi. How are you today? Fine. Oh, it's good to see you. Good to see you. Look what I brought for you. Mm -hmm. Dutch girl? I want my mommy. Dutch girl's name? <coughs> I won't. <laughs> this is Anne Marie. Yeah, um, listen, can you meet me at Lexington and Mc McCarthy in about 15 minutes? Yeah, we'll, we'll go for pizza or something. I I'll treat. <laughs> oh, 
he, he's fine. Yeah. Um, the family's over in, at the hospital, and everything's really worked out great. It's, yeah, it's really fine. Listen, can you meet me now? Okay, bye. Okay, Polly. Does that hurt at all there? Oh, don't worry. We're going to get her just as soon as we can. How about here? Does that hurt at all? We'll get you fixed up as soon as we can, okay? No. So, Doctor, what's the verdict? Uh, I think we now know what the problem with Paul is. Um, since he's been in the hospital, we've found a little rectal bleeding. Cancer? No, cancer. no, no, not, not cancer. He has what we think is probably called mechal diverticulum. What? What is well, that? It's just a little misplaced tissue that's in Paul's intestine, and it's causing a lot of acid. And as a result, it gives Paul pain, and now some I bleeding. I take it to mean that, that you're going to have to operate. Yeah, I really think we should just to get that piece of tissue out, and uh, we'll schedule that just as soon as I can. Um, it's just one problem. We really should have a chance to talk to both Paul and his mom before I schedule for the operation. But I mean, we're here. Oh, I know you're here, and it's great you are, but I think it's even more important that uh, Paul have a chance to be with his mom before we operate. Listen, anytime you want to buy me a double pepperoni pizza, it's all right with me. <laughs> sure. I've got an idea. Let's go surprise Polly. No, I I've got a better idea. Let's go bowling. Come on, you promised to take me. done enough bowling for two years. Maybe we can stop and, and get something to eat. Come on, it's almost midnight. I gotta go to work in the morning. I'll just drop you off at the hospital, okay? No, it's too late. Too late? What do you mean it's too late? Visiting hours are over. Oh, come on. You told me that parents could visit any time. You're not gonna go back at all? What? Walter, look, just leave me alone, oh, okay? come on, your kid is in the hospital. You're not going to go see him? Walter, look. What? If you're not going to take me for something, just take me home. Okay, I'll take you home. I don't want to know why you're not going to go over there, huh? If it were my kid, I'd be there right I now. I know, I'm... but it's not your kid, okay? I know it's not my kid. It's your kid. That's why I want to know why you're not going to go look, back. it's none of your business. It is my business. You've been using me all night to get away from your kid. I'll just go to hell. Sorry. You just don't understand. They had him in there, and they kept hurting him and scaring him, and, and I just kept scaring him more, no matter what I tried to do to help. I just felt so trapped. Take Loretta on home with you, all right? Yeah, all right. Come on, you come. On. I think I think I'll uh, I'll walk out with you to the elevator. All right.
Ellen. Are, are you in there? Where have you been? Where have you been? We've been booking all over for you. You're dead. Mama, call don't. anybody. Please. You okay? You okay, yeah. honey? What's happened? Why are you in here? Well, Anne Marie, they, uh. Listen, they decided to go ahead and operate on Polly. I knew it. It's okay. It's gonna be okay, Anne Marie. I knew it. Listen, Dr. Nahotsky explained everything real good to your dad and to me, all about it. And that nurse is gonna tell you anything you want to know about the operation, okay? Listen, there's just one thing, Anne Marie. They think it would be good if it was you who tells Polly about the operation. Ma, I can't. I, I, I won't oh, know what you yes, say. Oh, yes, you can, Anne Marie. You know why? Because you've got to. Now, come on. Come on, you can do it. operation to correct the wandering eye, we talked her for quite some time, she was five years old, about what the results of the operation would be, also telling her what the hospital visit would be like, it was her first time in the hospital. And frankly, the, the idea that her eyes would be corrected meant a lot to her, and she was able to deal with the hospitalization. Well, that was an advantage that most parents don't have. Uh, I know I'm very anxious myself about the possibility of Malik even going to the hospital. Of course, the main problem remains the nervousness of the child, and there are a lot of new programs set up to deal with that these days. One such program is at Children's Hospital in Washington, D.C. Dr. Mary Robinson has a few helpful ideas. Well, if, you're, if you have your tonsils back, your throat will hurt, that's right, and sometimes you'll feel a little dizzy, and sometimes a little sick at your stomach. Of course, children are worried and frightened about coming in the hospital. All of us are frightened when we have to be hospitalized. But children are particularly vulnerable because of their limited life experience and the many misconceptions they have about the experience of illness and hospitalization. Mommy is not allowed to go with her. She waits in the hospital room for Jill to come back. Mommy, she's scared, right? I don't think she's scared anymore. I think she was scared. Me too. You too? Yeah. I was scared of it. Oh, you were scared of it, yeah. It's important that you let your child talk the about morning, the experience. The explore his misconceptions. Nope. Get at issues relating to his feeling that illness and hospitalization are a punishment. He doesn't like it. Uh, he doesn't. He wants some aspirin. Okay, does he mm. like the aspirin? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, he doesn't like the green aspirin. Oh, dear, he doesn't like it. So. He doesn't like any medicine. Uh, Let me show you some of the Tell him what's going to happen. Prepare him not only for the big things that are going to happen, but for the little things as well. Things which we may consider uh, as very small in connection with having an operation. Green or blue? That's another myth. You want to try it, Richard? You want to try it like you're... 
That's a man. You can try one on two. Be honest with your child. Tell him that things are going to hurt when they will hurt. And please don't ever tell him that big boys or big girls don't cry. <laughs> if a parent wants to help a child cope with the fears, uh, admit that he's afraid too. Parents are afraid when their children go in the hospital. Then I think he has to be open about discussing those fears. Letting the child know that it's okay to be afraid. It's not something weird or strange about you because you're afraid. Your child needs your support when he's in the hospital. He needs your presence as much of the time as possible. And particularly if he's a young child, it's important that you insist on staying in the hospital with him. I've been continually amazed at how much children can tolerate in the presence of a warm, loving, familiar adult. They'll put up with procedures that would be terrifying to them otherwise. Accept the way the child is going to feel. Let him cry. Let him be angry. Permit him to be afraid. Be prepared for the fact that he may have some regressive behavior afterwards. That is, he may go back to wetting the bed, he may go back to baby talk, he may be more clinging, more easily frightened, more reluctant to separate from you. So remember, if you're the parent of a child who has to go into the hospital, prepare him for the experience. Be honest with him about the pain. Stay with him if you possibly can. Do everything you can to encourage the trust that already exists between you and your child, and encourage him to transfer some of that trust to the hospital personnel. Footsteps to follow, footsteps to make, moments of life. Wishing to take them over and over with never an end. Take a step backward and take them again. Following, following, but making a path of their own. They can travel and make it alone. The time is coming, we'll look for the day. With someone to guide them, they'll make their own way. Footsteps to follow, footsteps to make. New things to learn, a new lesson to take. Learning from every success and mistake. Footsteps. Footsteps to follow, footsteps to make. Footsteps.